American Ballpark for the broadcast crew. It is Bob Carpenter and Ray Knight. They talked about this trade all throughout the big win today. But guys, what do you think about how much of an impact Ryan Madsen and Sean Doolittle can have in this bullpen? Well, it's a good question, Byron. That remains to be seen, but I like it a lot. I know you do, because we're talking veteran guys who've been there, they've done that, they've pitched in the eighth, they've set up, they've pitched in the ninth, they've closed. And I think, uh, you know, as you and I talked about as well, Ray, now everybody kind of shuffles back into maybe areas where they're more comfortable, and it just doesn't benefit two guys. It benefits seven or eight guys. Well, it changes the whole bullpen, the whole look of the bullpen, the whole feel of the bullpen. When you get new personalities, you get Trinan out of here who was probably not necessarily positive because of the way that things went for him and gives him a better uh, opportunity to go out there and be successful. So I think it's a positive in so many ways. What I like is that neither one of these guys walk people and they keep the ball in the park. And that's something that we have not seen happen. We've seen home runs after home run. We've seen guys that get walked. These guys don't walk people. They have low earner and averages over their career. They've had all kinds of experience in the closing and the setup role. Uh, nothing beats experience better than stuff that you can get over the plate. So uh, great acquisitions, and uh, I just think it's going to be what turns the bullpen around, and you're going to see everybody in that bullpen get a little bit better. Everybody yeah. will get a little bit better. Nothing like competition. Well, you know, guys want to know what their roles are these days, and that's going to be a big thing for the Nationals bullpen. And I think there's a whole nother scope to these deals, bringing these guys in. And that's now the guys on offense, and they're trying to play defense in the late innings. They know they probably don't have to score seven or eight to win and hold on every night. Because, Ray, as you know, and FP's talked about this as well. You guys are ex-players. You know all about this. The toll it can take on the ball club when you're constantly grinding in the late innings, trying to survive and win a ball game, that affects you after a while. So maybe part of that goes away now, if not all of it. I think it all goes away right now because everybody's exciting about the changes. What happens and what FP's talked about, and I listened to him, is that when you get into that seventh inning with a four-run lead, you're not comfortable. You're looking over there seeing who's warming up, who do we have out there now. A guy walks, and then you start feeling, oh, my gosh, here we go again. And how many times can you say, here we go again? How many times can you blow saves? How many times can you see home runs go out of the ballpark? And it's not always in blown saves either. It's in games when you're down five to three. And you're going right. into the seventh inning, and all of a sudden, nobody shuts the other team down. And now you're down 7-3. That makes it that much more difficult. I think it's fantastic. Mike Rizzo does it again. And I uh, can't wait to talk to him and get his thoughts on that. But, guys, looks like better days are ahead. And this ball club's 19 games over 500 for the first time. Maybe 20 tomorrow before heading out west. So uh, I'd say this is a pretty good-looking weekend as we get into the first full week after the All-Star break. So everybody wants to know their roles. That's the analyst. I'm the play-by-play -play guy. Back to the studio, guys.